Hello everybody! Microsoft recently released Windows 10 Technical Preview, this latest version, which is the first to contain Cortana as well as Continuum and a few other very nifty features that everyone is completely going nuts over after releasing it, or rather announcing it, at their January event. And here is a Dell Venue 8 Pro, to which I have installed it. And um, it was kind of a pain in the ass, actually. A few notes if you want to do this yourself. It has no drivers. There will be no drivers for nothing. Touchscreen won't work. The power button won't work. Um, wireless won't work. Sound won't work. You've basically got to hope that you have a USB hub that will work, plug in a mouse, a keyboard, and a flash drive with drivers on it to actually get your machine working. But once you do it appears to work rather well and is actually quite stable for a beta such as this. Let's see if I can get my uh, camera moved in a bit closer for this. There we go. That's much better. One of the things I should have checked before I started recording. Ah, professional. Okay. So here we are on the desktop. Right now it is in... I believe it is in tablet mode. That is one of the new features. Yes, that is in tablet mode. Okay, so now we're back in regular mode. This is what you'd see if you had a mouse and a keyboard hooked up. You've got the... Hmm, wrong hand. You've got the start button, the search bar, the multiple desktop switcher. There's the icon for the new Windows Store. Internet Explorer, browser, keyboard, da, 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 da. The battery icon is now horizontal instead of vertical. Wireless icon looks pretty much the same. The sound icon is a bit different, though it's still this tiny little slider. I'm really hoping that will change. And then notifications. And the notification center is interesting because you actually have swipeable uh, notifications, which I believe are also actionable, though I've never done anything on here that would have an actionable uh, notification. You also have quick links down here. Uh, you can switch between tablet mode. You can change display options, which is currently broken. You can connect to remote displays, look at all your settings, virtual private network, lock it from rotating, GPS, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, all of that sort of thing. There are no Bluetooth settings, though I did get Bluetooth drivers set up. Uh, this is a local account, so I won't really be able to demo things that require a Microsoft keyboard. I do not believe Cortana will work. Yeah, she's not going to work without a Microsoft account. But Cortana is present, and if you uh, long press on the taskbar here, and you can see in tablet mode that the right-click menus... Ooh, not that one, but this one is very large and finger-friendly. If I go to search, I can change it to just an icon, because honestly, I really don't like having that enormous bar there. And uh, right now, I'd like to address something that pisses me off a lot more than it should. My autofocus. And also, the recycling icon. It's the same damn icon we've had since Windows Vista. Please get rid of it as soon as possible. They've mocked up a lot of other icons. If we go into the Explorer, we will see this. Wow, look at all those new icons. They look like a kindergartner drew them. I really hope that's not final. Probably not, considering this is a very early preview. Not even the consumer preview. Um, I don't even think this really counts as dev preview. This is the technical preview. Never did say the build number. It's 9926. Ha ha ha, for people in the future. Um... Yeah, but even for an a pre a early preview like this, take some pride in your work, really. And look at those buttons. No, just no. Why are they so close to the top? That's awful. Please, please don't. Okay, so yeah, uh, the Explorer's a bit different. Store, I don't know if I can show the updated store. Ah, okay, but this will give me a chance to show something very interesting. Now here I am, this is sort of how it would work with the mouse and keyboard. Uh, thank you. I don't know why that was large. Okay, so you've got windows, you can move them around. It's, it's just like when, having windows for some reason. I can't drag this one no matter what I do and I'm not quite sure. Ah, there we go. Haha, <laughs> it's just because it wasn't loaded yet. Yay, so I can drag my windows around and I've got, you know, I'm a start menu and I can scroll there and I can go to all apps and I can scroll up and down there when it loads. That takes a little while to load, I'm not sure why. You can scroll down all apps, and it's actually quite quick and responsive. Uh, this button will switch between full screen and not. And you go to user, and that's where you log out and such power power options. Okay, so that's all well and cool. Uh, what Continuum, a new feature, does is 
if you plug in a mouse and keyboard, it switches to this mode from tablet mode, which I just enabled and disabled all in one fell swoop. Good job, me. And uh, now we have no taskbar up here or window controls. All of the taskbar, no title bar or window controls. The taskbar goes empty. The Metro menu is forced to be full screen no matter what. So you're back to a full screen start screen, whether you like it or not. And uh, it, it basically works how Windows 8 used to work. Uh, going to start up a couple of apps. I can't really do much of anything because I don't have a Microsoft account. Actually, let's not do that one. I don't want you crazy people knowing where I live. So we'll just do that. We'll do settings. And you can see as I'm doing this how snappy everything is. Oh, I haven't shown off settings yet. We'll get to that. This will give us an opportunity. Yay. So, uh, lol yes so we've got a few apps open and usually to swipe between apps you would swipe in from the left and it would just go to the next app except it's not always the next app if you wait too long it'll just switch back to the app you were at before if you do it really rapidly it'll cycle through all the apps and to be honest it made no goddamn sense whatsoever and always ticked me off but now yay previews and you can close them. You can't swipe them away. And you also can add desktops for the multi-desktop thing, which I've honestly never found any case in which I'd want multiple desktops. But um, Linux has it and my Mac has it. So uh, apparently we need it. I suppose some people use it, but not me. So I guess I shouldn't ditch. Um, I shouldn't hate on that too hard. And you can close programs. That's working well. Ah, yeah, you can... Oh, that's it. Because there's a dialog box. I can't close it from there. Okay, this is the new settings menu. This replaces the control panel, finally. And it looks quite nice, even though it's absolutely nothing like the old Metro start screen. It actually looks a bit more like... To be brutally honest, it looks like Windows XP's setting menu. Just with less color. Hmm. And you've got all the stuff that you'd expect. You've got settings. They're not really all that well fleshed out, but they are there. Something of note is that you can't really change the Metro colors anymore. It's, it's all personalization options. I think I have to go back to desktop mode for this. Yes, I do. It's in personalize options here, which are still old hideous Windows style but you change the color and it just changes everything. Mm, puke green, that's my favorite, said no one ever. Uh, I guess in a weird ironic way it is sort of endearing, but I'm uh, not going to bother. So evidently there is some work to be done there because you can still get to the old control panel through there. Um, no, come back, personalize, control panel home. Whoa, look, ha uh ha. -huh. The old control panel. Wow. Uh, the new browser, Spartan, is not present. Uh, for the most part, all the apps are the same. There is the new Xbox app, but as much as I'd like to show you that, I have to sign in. And apparently Xbox, Xbox, Xbox. Mm, sure. Yeah, it just says sign in. But at, in its current state, the beta Xbox app lets you chat with your Xbox Live friends, look at all your achievements, and it has a link to the Microsoft Store. You cannot yet record stuff, uh, do all the frapsy thingies and stuff of that nature. But it is pretty cool. I quite like being able to talk to my friends through Xbox Live, even when I'm not around my Xbox. Internet Explorer uh, is apparently different. I'm not quite sure how or why. It has a smiley face in the corner. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a developer tool and not actually a new feature. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Mm, close all tabs. Thank you. And that is pretty much it. There isn't a whole lot else to this build, though I will say it is quite stable. All of the features seem to work rather well. And there we go. I say. I'm not sure... I, I have no idea what's supposed to happen when you do that. It just kind of makes the bottom bar spaz out a bit. But maybe they'll figure that out. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to be able to hide that when you're in tablet mode. Maybe I have to be in tablet mode for that to work. 
Nope. Okay, cool. Well, that's working well. So there you have it. That is the latest build of Windows 8. Why did it come back on? Huh. That is the latest build of Windows 8 running on a Dell Venue 8 Pro. It runs pretty well. It's pretty much solid enough to use as a daily driver. I had some issues with my Bluetooth keyboard, but I think that's more due to the fact that it is a Chinese Bluetooth keyboard rather than anything to do with driver issues with this. I have heard though that if you have a Surface Pro 3, you're gonna want to avoid this like the plague because it doesn't work right at all. Um, oops, oopsies, let's not. So there you go. Windows 10, I think I said Windows 8 a few times. That's not Windows 8, that is Windows 10. I think I might've just screwed the whole video. Oh well.